Hello everybody, happy Friday and welcome to another Adobe Live here every weekday between 12 and 1. Fantastic, great to see so many of our regular friends in the chat. We'll get a chance to say hi in a minute and also hi to the new friends in our community, which is great. Now, don't forget, if you're joining us via uh, YouTube, that is just fine, but you can't really get involved in the chat. No, no, no. It's the wrong chat, not the chat you are looking for. Where you need to actually go is to behance.net slash Adobe Live, and you can join us there and get involved with our community. Ask questions of myself and our fabulous guest, who today is Juliet Moss. How are you, Juliet? How are you doing? Hi, I'm fine. How about you? Yeah, not too bad. I've had a bit of a bunged up week. I'm full of cold, but no, not to worry about it. So. Oh, no. Thank God it's Friday then. Oh, oh, no, it's fine. It's all good. Yes, absolutely. Friday, just two more working days until Monday, which is brilliant. So. What? I'm not sure this is legal. <laughs> well, I'm the boss, so there you go. <laughs> right, so. All right. <laughs> anyway, all joking aside. So, Juliet, welcome uh, here to uh, to Adobe Live. Lovely to have you along. Thank In you just a minute, me. we'll find out a little bit more about you. Uh, but first, let's say hello to some of our uh, community here. We've got some regular, some people come from all over the world to join us. We have Steve who joins us from New Zealand. We also get Bob who joins us from Arizona, actually sets an alarm so that he can be up and watch it live before his friends seeing it later on in the day. Uh, so we've got Caroline with us. Hi, Caroline. We've got Robert. We've got Christy. We've got Jackie. Hi, Jackie. Uh, we have, I think, Robert, I mentioned just a moment ago. We've got Gareth. Hi, Gareth. Caroline, did I mention Caroline? If not, two mentions, that's fair. Uh, there we are. We've also got, I think I saw Sandrine in there. Hi, Sandrine. We've got Oliver. Hey, Oliver. We've got Angus. Hi, Angus. Oh, so many more. There we go. Great. And uh, we've got Sanjana as well. Hey, 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 really good. So, Juliet, these are the people you'll be speaking to. They'll throw hey. in your question. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot. Wow. Yeah, it's quite. Oh, yeah, we do get loads and loads and loads here, which is really, really good. So, uh, excellent. Generally, in the well over 10,000 uh, on a Friday, which is really, okay. really good. So, uh, all good fun. No pressure. <laughs> no at pressure. All. <laughs> Excellent. Anyway, for people who have uh, never met you or seen your yeah. stuff before, let's have a look at some stuff and you can tell people who you are and what you do. Let's do that. Yeah. Okay. So, can I do something like that? Yeah. Yes, you can. We can see okay, everything there. Great. Perfect. So, uh, I'm a friend of a Caribbean graphic designer and illustrator. Uh, I've started a career in tech. It's something that I've done and I'm not sure I can advise people to do so, but hey! <laughs> <laughs> and uh, now my passion is to play with brands, to infuse them with colors, passion, honesty. Um, so I guess this is what I do? Yep. It's fab colors. Thank you so much. I love it. <laughs> and when you also, you were on the um, Adobe Creative Residency Community Fund. Right? Yes, Fund, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I, so back in June, I um, have been selected and I had the pleasure to work on Black, Mo Black Womanhood and Mental Health. Um, it was such a pivotal product for me. Uh, I actually, I'll be happy to talk through it today. Uh, and I would also encourage people to apply to the fund. So, not sure if our audience know about that, but uh, Adobe switched from having annual residents. I think they have two uh, this year, but um, they're using all the money they're us usually um, having for 10 people to actually power and invest in dozens and dozens of young talent. Yeah. So you can still do that. It's running all year long. I think it will be until March uh, 2021, something like this. Mm. Um, and it's been amazing. The, the experience has been amazing. Uh, there's support from, from everyone. You're meeting amazing artists. Um, 
and you have the chance to actually yeah uh, i think build projects so there's two things you either have a project grant which uh, uh, is the thing that I, I've done. So I've pitched my projects and then Adobe gave me some, some money to do that. But oh, you can also uh, apply for a commission, I think. And then you have a brief and you're doing something, you're partnering with Adobe. So both are great. I've met so many cool people over there. Yeah. So I could, uh, like, uh, I actually have the tab open here okay so if you go to that page which which is adobe.com about adobe and creative residency mm. you can apply um i think they're reviewing um uh, people that are that are applying right now until yeah. next year so if you're not selected this month maybe it will be next month maybe it will be next year but once you're there, there's a chance for you to be sponsored by Adobe, which is, well, such a great thing when you're... Mm, fantastic opportunity. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, I guess it is what it is. If you have any question on that, I, I'll be happy to answer, actually. Absolutely. Well. People will um, people will come along and, uh, and pop some questions as we go along, I'm sure. Uh, so, yes, fantastic. So, what will you be showing us... Uh, today, Julia, do you have plans to show us anything in particular or? Yeah, uh, yeah, actually, so the session is about finding your style. And I think it's such a difficult part of the job when you're starting. Sometimes you feel like maybe, well, you're one in a million and not sure about what you want to do in your career or what you want to do as a designer or as an illustrator or as an artist. And I can't remember the moment where I started to have a distinct style I could like call my own, but uh, I fully remember the fact that I felt so like not enough when starting and not knowing where I was supposed to go and what I was supposed to do. So what I would want to offer um, this morning would be a few resources to start and playing in Illustrator and then later on we can go in Illustrator and review a few things. Perfect. Right. Yay, cool. Yeah, that's cool. Jackie is asking actually, did, did you did you have to um, submit work to support your application? I guess you did, right? Oh, actually no. So they were asking for uh, social links and a BNs link. So they yeah. do, uh, like, they, they, they saw my work, but uh, when you're applying for a product grant, the most important part is to explain what you'll do. So yeah. there's around, I think, three big questions. One is, what is your project? The other one is, um, how would you plan your, pro your project? Because it's between a week and a month, I think. So you can tell exactly what, what you would do if you had a month. And then I think, how would you share the project? The, these are the, the three big things you'll be asked. And then I think the, well, obviously, as I said, that's so what I was doing, but I don't think this is the core thing. Mm. Cool. Okay. All right. So let's have a look then at what, uh, at what we're going to see in finding our style. Yay! So, uh, first thing first, what I want to remind to everyone that w that is starting right now and isn't sure of what they're doing, like everyone, but especially when you're starting something new, is it takes time. Like, it won't happen overnight, so I don't think um, you should panic if you don't have a style or if you don't know how to use a soft, because both are actually a learning process. Like. Obviously, I believe that some people have talents and they'll be like, it'd be maybe easier for them to, to do things. But most of the time, talent is just hard work. So I don't think you should panic or question yourself if you're just starting and you don't know what's happening around you. One thing I would want to offer uh, would be free resources because I, I feel like uh, this might be something important when you, when you start and most of the time 
everything is well you need to to pay for for everything and maybe you don't have much resources so yeah first thing first typography i when i started i was on that font 24 7 but i like has time passed i i think i discovered that maybe that font was not the best website because sometimes you don't know who is uploading the font if the license is good if you have any right to use that font uh, if you can use it in personal or commercial projects so i do think it's important to be careful about that like actually building crafting fonts is a profession and it takes time and it takes money and there's people behind that so what i would advise is to look at foundry and sometimes they offer really really cool resources mm. it's the case here with pengram pengram they have this designer font starter pack which is amazing you are just paying 25 dollars and you have all these great fonts um you need to check the license but it's for personal use you do have the right to use um, it on social media and for your personal projects but it's a good way to to start playing with great fonts and of course you have access with creative cloud you have access to all of the adobe fonts as yeah well, which is, yeah which is amazing but i feel yeah. like uh, most of the time when you're starting, you want to have all the font in the world. You're yeah. constantly searching for new things. And it's always cool to have these, which uh, mm. I think are a good way also to, well, actually find your style. Because in seeing so many fonts, um, I think you'll, you'll develop a taste for what you like, the shape you like, the eras you like as well. Um, because if you're... I think there's two to profile when you're trying to learn a thing. Either you're really geeky about it and you'll do your research and you'll learn the rules around type typography, or actually you want to be hands on and to try things out. And sometimes just seeing the fonts and playing with the fonts will start and help you discover what eras you're most comfortable with mm. or the type of style that is resonating with yours. So the Pangram Pangram uh, starter pack is amazing for that. There's also Onotype that is doing pretty much the same. You can have demo font. Uh, it's all free, but it's only for personal projects and you only have to experiment with, with them. So you can't sell them. You can't use them in commercial projects. You can design a logo with them and sell it to your aunt, even if it's funny you should pay for that but yep. for everything else you can start and play with things which to me is the way to discover your style not being afraid to well mess things up do things that are really ugly until you understand how everything works and you can do really great thing so the last uh, resource uh, font wise is velvetin so it's a, a french website but i think everything is in, in, is in english so you should be fine. Certainly looks that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So everything here, I believe, is free both for personal and commercial projects. Don't quote me on that. Always check the license. But Good advice. There's, <laughs> yeah. Well, better be safe than sorry. But mm -hmm. I, I think you can use everything. And here, there's so many great fonts, playful fonts. Yeah even ridiculously playful fonts, but I think you need to try. That's so funny. <laughs> I love it. Yes. Yeah, I, mm. I don't think anyone should be scared to do something really kitsch or really ugly in design. This is actually, I think, the way to go if you want to truly discover what works. Yeah, you need to do awful things in order to figure what mm. a good thing is. And then I think what's fundamental in my style is colors. So as I've shown, I'm using a lot of colors. To me, color is more than just something you sprinkle on your design. It's a passion. So I remember being really scared of color and not understanding how colors work. You're not supposed to know how it works. You can trust 
some other people that <laughs> have done the work if you're uncomfortable with that and it's the case with color ants for example so on this website you have palettes um, you can see that I, I i have saved some palettes that i really like just right there and this is a good starting point where you can just trust someone else pick four colors and be sure that if the layout is not working if you aren't sure of your font at least your color is great <laughs> Um, I guess another thing, I'm not using much pictures in my work, but if you're interested in that, Pexel is always a good resource. So there's all these great photographers that are uploading their work over there. It's free for personal and for commercial projects. Uh, obviously, if you have an Adobe subscription, you also have Adobe Stock. And there's a lot of great stuff you can buy there. But if you're just starting and you're unsure and you just want to try things out, you can give it uh, a try. Pexels is to this day my reference when I'm just trying to see how things with, will work. Sometimes I'm just typing a random, like my recent research. Oh, yeah. Sensual, teenager, youth, podcast. Sometimes I'm just typing the the most random words I can think of, and then I'll try and build a mood around that. So Ooh, try graphite infusion. Let's give it a <laughs> see how that goes. Let's see. Okay. Let's see what we get. The, we have well, pictures. We've got <laughs> results. That's amazing. <laughs> so I haven't managed to whack pexels, but there we go. I don't even know why we have this. But I don't know, but that looks like a margarita. I'm not going to try it, though, if it's got graphite in it. <laughs> I'm so interested. So, okay, let's see if the... So, the related tags are alcohol, beverage, citron, citrus, cocktail, called no graphite. So I don't Picking know. on infusion. In that case, try um, try something something else infusion. Let's try cartoon infusion. I don't know. Um, okay, cartoon infusion. It works. Yeah, it, it does. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so definitely a go-to resource for me. Even nice. with Scalton Infusion, there is results, so <laughs> give it a go. <laughs> and, uh... Mojito, that's what I was thinking of. Not a, there we go, yeah. <laughs> what? A mojito, that's what I was oh, thinking what? of. Yeah, yeah. Glass of fresh drink on white background. So, yeah, I don't know what in this is Scalton Infusion or Graphite Infusion, but it does work. It does. So, once you have everything you need, you can move on to Illustrator. And another thing you should be mindful of is the type of inspiration you have. So just so you know, before I'll tell you how I'm sourcing my work, I'll show you. So this is my all the pieces of my project, of my grant project. So in the end, it looked like, like, looked like that. This is what I've uploaded um, on Instagram. But... If I, uh, wait, okay, here, if we're being through, this is what my outboards look like. So, <laughs> welcome to my messy kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Promise me you'll never send that to a client. So this is not, uh, your file is supposed to work if you're working with someone if you're sending your file to a client this is not what it's supposed to look like but you should not be afraid to be really really messy in order to things to actually come together yeah, there's and still a bit of expression in there definitely a big part yeah. of of my work every time i'm starting a project is having a mood board so there's plenty of artists having like really nice and neat way to put mood balls together. But for me, it, looked like, it looks like that. Most of the time it's just putting pictures right there to create a mood. And mm. then from this, I'll have ideas. And the fact that I have my mood balls just next to my art balls, 
most of the time will fuel my work way easier than if I had to jump back to something else, looking at my reference and then jumping back to my to my art boards. But I also have an it way to put mood boards together. I would advise using Pinterest. A key part of, I think, finding your own style is also to look at other people's people style and consume as much, as many images as possible. Because at the end of the day, crafting something and building your own, your own style is also being able to understand the references you've looked at and understand other people's work. So what I tend to do is having this big Pinterest where I put everything I like. You can also have dedicated um, little boards. So these are mine. And most of the time when I start a project, I'll create a document, but then everything else is in Illustrator. So Illustrator is my home. It's my mom. It's my best friend. It's the cousin I don't know about. It's ver it's everything. So I'm trying to be software agnostic because obviously it's good to learn about like a lot of stuff, to learn how to use stuff. But I also feel like software shouldn't get in the way of your creation. And for me, it's Illustrator. I no, everything starts and everything ends in Illustrator for me. Maybe it's not the case for you, but then what are you doing in an Illustrator stream? So <laughs> It kind when of I, is the beginning and end for me as well. So you're right. <laughs> We're all I'm good. I'm so happy because usually I'm the odd one. Like everyone is like, oh no, it's Photoshop for me. Everything is in Photoshop. And I can't bring myself to... Well, obviously I'll have a pipeline. Like if I if I need to like play with images, I'll go in Photoshop. I open InDesign from time to time because I need it for work, but everything needs to start in Illustrator. And I feel like for me, it was the, mo the most flexible when it came to the fact that I wanted to be playful and to try things and to break things because it's there's so many things you can do. I'm by no means an Illustrator, I think, expert, but for what I'm, the, the, the type of style and type of work I'm trying to do. Illustrator is giving me everything I need. Yeah. So usually we'll start like that. I will have my mood board. I will put everything here. And then most of the time I'm doing a long list of fonts. So <laughs> this is the most messiest tip ever, the messiest Wait. This is interesting. I like this. <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing this, but I realized it was really part of my process when I discovered that I, I would do that every time. But I guess it is what it is. So I'll do a long list of everything. And usually in Illustrator, you can actually see how it will look like. You can, like, you have a, a preview, but it's not enough for me. So <laughs> What I tend to do when I'm starting a project is finding the right mood and finding the right mood for me is finding the right images, the, the thing that will put, put me in a mood, then find the right colors. So for example, with all these references, some are about colors, some are about layout, but some are straight up about a mood because uh, I barely used uh, images, pictures and photography in my uh, product form, but these pictures, these pictures, these pictures, for me, they were telling something I wanted to convey uh, because obviously, uh, so I was working uh, on mental health and on black womanhood and just seeing these black women happy and smiling and having this sense of joy, of energy. It felt like I had no idea how it would translate in my project, but I knew it was, some, it was something I needed to to put me in, in the right mindset. So I'll do this little long, <laughs> depends on the project, list of fonts, and then I'll get to work. And it's not by any means like a straight <laughs> journey. I think this is also something we shouldn't be afraid of. 
because uh, from the start I knew I wanted to do 18 pieces when I started my project, but I didn't know in, in what order I loosely planned this. And then I just allowed myself um, jumping back and forth between ideas, so developing something, trying something um, with a piece and then jumping back on something else and duplicating my my outboards is helping because I can so for me it's like a, a stream of consciousness yeah almost because mm. I'll have an idea and I'll try to translate this in a graphic language and duplicating something will help me to see the evolution so I have this idea I feel like something is odd who's always is not working quite yet for example, I've done this one before this one, I believe. And I felt like with this artboard, uh, I wanted to convey this sense of heaviness and being overwhelmed and just this crushing sense of this is too much. Mm. So I've played with fonts. I was just um, extending things. So most of the time I'll have the same go to uh, I'm using a lot of envelopes, which are... Oh, also, this is about to become a French lesson because my soft is in <laughs> French, <laughs> so... It's all good. Uh, I'm playing a lot with envelopes. Uh, I do think it's the same word in English. It's yeah, it's, yeah, 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 yeah. En envelope is exactly the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yay! Yeah. I'm trying this yep. a lot, like trying to use the French word and see if anyone is noticing. And sometimes it's actually... Yeah, no, you can make with the top object, you can make with all of those different things. So it's all, all the same. Yep. Perfect. So most of the time I'll use these. There's a lot of ways you can use envelopes. And for me, destroying, playing with fonts is also a part of um, the type of work I'm doing. And I don't think you should feel too cautious about like breaking the the rules when it comes to playing with fonts. Obviously, you have to know the rules before <laughs> trying to break them. But sometimes you just need to like go all out and play with things. So here I was trying something, but I realized, okay, this might have the right intention, but then it's not readable. Maybe there's something else. Maybe it's, it needs to be clearer. Uh, maybe I need to think that this piece will be surrounded by other pieces. So um, I'm usually duplicating, duplicating, duplicating until I'm like, okay, this is the one. But even not deleting the previous one can help me actually fueling something else because sometimes I'll, I'll start and work on something that is not why it's working for a piece, but then I'm like, okay, so maybe this is interesting. Maybe I could do that somewhere else. Like for example, here, I've tried something that was not working at all, but which I encourage. So this is just me searching for texture in Google, then taking like a paint stroke and then outlining it. So. Once again, messy tip, but tip anyway, when you're looking at something like on Google, you can search for everything and sometimes you can randomly try to outline stuff. Mm. I ended up not using it here, but then I was like, oh, okay, this texture is really interesting. Maybe I should use it on another project. Maybe I should use more like paint in my project. And it started for me a new idea, not on this project, but on something else. So to me, yeah, having a messy artboard is key to like uncovering all the, the potential within a project, but also outside of this project. So I guess so far, the idea is to be curious, to try things out, to have all these resources that you can put loosely on your artboard and then figure stuff out later. Uh, sometime here maybe we have another one. Oh, this is actually a good example of what it could look like like i've duplicated this so many times and it loosely looks the same but sometimes it's down to a pixel or down to a placement like okay i won't like so 
I wouldn't be capable of like telling what's the difference between this one and this one, but <laughs> there might be one because I've done that and I was like, okay, maybe the placement of this cycle needs to be moved or maybe this can be changed to... I would encourage people to duplicate things, break things, mix things as much as possible because most of the time this is where the happy accident will occur. Because mm -hmm. to me, it's very much that. I was actually um, scrolling through my feed and there is this great professor. He's, he's called Mitch Goldstein. Yep. I, I like him so much and he had this tweet about his process and it was basically not, 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 oh, there you are. And this is my process. This is how you work. I feel like sometimes you want things to be neat, but they need to be messy and ugly. And obviously, the more you'll work and the more you'll have your process in mind, like I can tell that some step I do all the time. But I'm not afraid of, I think, coming to terms with this idea that, oh, well, sometimes it's just a mess until it, it, is, it isn't. And I think it's a great, well, at least it works for me. It's a great yeah. way for me to not to be stuck in, okay, I'm working in, in this neat little strict art board and it yeah. needs to work. <laughs> you know, this is explorative, right? And that's, yeah. that's what it should be. I think if you work straight away with the first solution that you arrive at this you've either been extraordinarily lucky yeah which probably happens yeah. two well, or three times yeah. in a lifetime if at best or you just you you've stopped caring definitely about well, what you do which is both sad and okay if it's mm. not i mean I'm thinking a lot about the design, like graphic design as a job. And I feel like sometimes we are putting too much emphasis on the fact that it's a passion and you need to breathe 24-7 uh, graphic design. And I mean, it's okay if you don't. And you have to, to remind yourself that, okay, maybe it's also a way to, well, actually pay your bills. And if it's your, the case for you, well, more power to you, but... At the same time, for me, it's it's a joy. I'm doing I'm doing this job because it's a joy to do graphic design, to be able to play, and this explorate explorative uh, way to proceed. Yeah, is definitely something. Yeah, that is part of my process. I feel yeah. like it's making me better, and also allowing myself to well do do things that are really ugly, really awful really like that are not working by any means like on this board you can like i've tried something like this and i don't think i'm fully comfortable admitting it to the public because it's ugly and awful but i needed to do that first in order to understand how far i could go with this idea if it was the good idea if there were any way it could work in the world before moving on and starting to to do other things so one thing one lesson for me would be not being afraid it's supposed to be a joyful process it's supposed to be messy and ugly sometimes and even if at the end of the day when you'll send this file to to your client you'll need to clean all the mess you've done yeah yeah that's it yeah 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 <laughs> You'll need to name your layers and group your elements, please. But until then, I think you should allow yourself to just go wherever you want with your project and work in the way that makes you comfortable and that isn't getting in the way of, well, you discovering what you want from the project and what you were trying to achieve. Yeah. So, being curious, having resources. Also, I think breaking down reference can help. Obviously, I'm doing that less and less because I feel like the more you're progressing in your career and the, 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 the most like images you're 
seeing and processing and having in mind, you will start to make connection by intuition. Yes. But I think as a start, it's also really important to sometimes just open an Illustrator file, put like two or three references that you really like and trying to understand, okay, what is it in this particular work that I like or that I find is working or that I would want to reproduce? It can be a good exercise both, um, I think, technically and creatively, because obviously, technically, sometimes I stumble on, a, on an image and I'm like, oh my God, this is the best effect in the world. And I'll just try to understand and rep reproduce it, which makes me open zillions of tutorials and also trying a few things because there's millions of ways to come up with the same results. So sometimes it's just a technical exercise, but, uh, uh, but sometimes it's also about, okay, creatively, there's something that really strike me in this project. And I feel like back when I was at the start of my journey with graphic design, I wouldn't be able to tell this is the thing. This is why I'm so attracted to that. So uh, maybe it's the font, but maybe it's also the mood it captured. Maybe it's the essence of the work and the layout, or maybe it's something. Actually, I discovered looking at uh, millions and millions of images that I was at attracted to the same project because I was really attracted to the neo new Memphis era. So this <clears throat> is also a way to uh, reverse engineer uh, stuff, but also reverse engineer the way your brain is working in graphic design. Um, and sometimes you'll you'll learn something. I mean, this is because I've I had seen all these images and tried all this stuff that at some point I was like, okay, there's too many references. There's probably a name for that. And then I've searched and discovered, okay, all right, it's Neo Memphis. I'm attracted to Neo Memphis. And then I started to to type that in every search engine possible. And I've discovered my tribe. So I guess sometimes just op opening Illustrator can lead to like breakthrough in your journey, in your yeah. your way to approach the craft. So how long how long have you? Well, I don't think I got this at the beginning, and if 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 I did, I'm sorry, but I'm I'm still I'm full sorry. of head gold. Um, but the uh, how long have you been going? How long have you been doing this? It's a really good question, and no, I didn't mention that at the beginning. So um, I've been doing this professionally for five years. So mm. I've done four years in house and. A year in freelance but uh, I've started I think 10 years 10 plus years ago because at the very beginning of my journey I am ashamed to admit it but I started with Photoshop I mean sorry illustrator fan <laughs> not the real one but I started in Photoshop and then when I started to study uh, graphic design in a school I got presented to my now husband illustrator. So I managed to actually find my very first project in Illustrator. And once again, I should not be comfortable like clicking on that, but okay. So <laughs> this is the very first thing I've done in Illustrator. <laughs> and I guess it tells you. Those are yeah, real, real strong color again. <laughs> yeah. I guess Even back then, right? Real strong color. Oh my God. Yeah, I guess it is. that's the highlight of this, that it tells that at first I was attracted to like vivid colors, but then all the rest is, well, trash. But I think it shows That's that. a little bit harsh. <laughs> I have seen. Please. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Honestly, but, it's, not, it's not. Why do you think it's so terrible? It is bad. It's bad. It's like, not. It's not dreadful though. Uh, no, color. it's it. No, it's well. I mean, you know, there are some things that are working with contrast or whatever else, but there is an element of composition in there. You know, uh, you, you're too kind. I. It's definitely. Uh, I think a British approach to that because like 
my my French teacher would have been like, well, actually, I think at the time they were like, Ugh, this is <laughs> something. <laughs> it was the French way, like, okay, it's Sunday, right, okay. Uh, I met, it is what it is, it's your first time. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I guess um, it also, I think, tells the story of like not being afraid to try things out and to start yeah. somewhere because obviously at the time I knew nothing about the software and I knew nothing about graphic design and composition and layout. But having this as a, as a reminder is actually cool to understand that wherever you are in your journey, if you're just starting and if you're not sure of if you can make it or if you you have a potential like i don't think now is the right moment to to want like to ask about this question because obviously when you're learning a software but also when you're learning about graphic design there's too many things to figure out like prior to mm -hmm. asking okay can i be paid for that because certainly i get i hope this was not the question in my life <laughs> at the time <laughs> And you have to be persistent. I guess this is this is a lesson here because, well, starting from the bottom and now we're here. And by no mean, I imply that like this is the best test of work. Not mm. at all. I'm still very early in this journey, and I believe like it's a long, a long life, like a, a lifetime of oh god, English. Um, of improvement and of work and yeah there is like the process development of, right yeah, so exactly. it's development self-critical development is the is exactly the yeah and i guess the the second thing i would be uh, aware of is if i started is the I believe it's called the Dunning Kruger effect. Dunning Kruger, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Where you, where you, people, higher functioning people doubt their own abilities, and lower functioning people actually think they're better at things than they actually are. Exactly, and I feel like it's it's really relevant creatively because yeah. there's a lot of time where our um, abilities to judge our own work and our abilities to produce said work won't be at the same level so there's plenty of time in our journey where sometimes we're like this is the best thing i've done ever just to realize nine years later that oh mm. my god <laughs> this was awful and i i want i, I never want to do that again but sometimes mm. it's also like actually bashing yourself and being like oh my god this is not good enough and i'm not where i wanted to to go and uh, well, that's a little bit. Oh, there's a little bit of. Uh, so I, I meet a lot of people like this, you know. Uh, that it's a tiny bit of imposter syndrome where they actually think, yes. you know, I don't rightfully have a place at the table. Yeah. But in fact, the reality is, if you're making stuff, you do have a place at the table. You only don't have a place at the table if you're not trying. Yeah. This is super comforting. You know. I, I feel like it's a really, really, really important thing to have mm. in mind because I'm definitely participating in this important so the, thing. So you have a place at the table. It's as, it's as simple as that. Yeah, you know? definitely. Yeah. I feel like it's it can be difficult and hard to start right now because even 10 years ago mm. when we had like social media but not at this level, we would see all those amazing references like all these amazing artists and suddenly it's really easy to feel like like a teeny tiny <laughs> um, we feel artist. inferior but it this is the distortion of that lens of, of, of looking through the lens of social media definitely where, pe where people only present the best version of themselves and their work you don't see i mean this this is very very this is absolutely naked on here because you're seeing everything that you're doing which is fantastic Right, you've got the whole raw thing right from beginning to end. Yeah. Which is which is genuine. Whereas you get do get some people who make it look as if they can present something like that and it's done and it looks like incredible. I yeah. think it's really difficult to well own to the messy process and show your like nakedness um, in streams like that because well everywhere mm. else things are so polished and I I feel like maybe well it's 
a platform thing or maybe it's just because we're trying to to be as good as the the next one but then if the only thing we see is this clean knit project then you don't want to come with that and show how beautiful and ugly and messy it it can be one of the great Oh, sorry. Go on. Yeah, no, go for it. I was just going to say that one of the great things about these Adobe Lives has been that we've had so many people on here, yourself included, who have been quite open and honest about their process and shown things that, you know, that maybe didn't work out so well to start off with and talked about thinking about it. And I think it's important here for everybody who's who's watching this, either live right yeah. now or, or on demand, to understand, like we were saying a moment ago, Start making stuff. Keep making stuff. Look at what you like. Do, follow exactly um, here advice like Juliet's that says, you know, try things out. Try and move things around. You're not going to reach a solution quickly. But as long as you keep going, yeah, you're going to end up going somewhere with it. Yeah, Don't judge yourself because that's the thing that makes people unhappy, I think. And then they stop making good Definitely. things, you know, so... No, it's great that you're showing all of this and that you're, you know, you're talking about those things. Well, thank you so much. Mm. I think it's because we have platforms like that and mm. streams like that that we're able to, well, explain a bit more what it actually looks like. But obviously, if you're like spending your days on Instagram, I think it's a recipe for disaster because there's always, I, I guess it's, it's great for finding new things and finding new artists and interacting, but we shouldn't forget that this is not uh, like what it looks like. This is not graphic design or this is not illustration. It's the final product. It's, it's just the output of a lengthy, sometimes painful process. Yeah. So I guess, yeah, this would be my, my biggest thing. And I think it's really great that you encourage people to try and work and do things i'm thinking about mitch goldstein again because he's amazing and everyone should follow him he started uh at the beginning of the pandemic he started a workshop i think called the obstructions workshop and it's exactly about that it's just making things so i think i have a tab open and it's just right there and the idea between uh, behind the, the workshop is just to produce things. So you have you'll have a generator of ideas with three different obstructions. So it's basically constraints, and you'll need to produce something just with this prompt. And I feel like young designer or aspiring designer or people that just want to create stuff, maybe artists, illustrators, should at least give it a try because mm. I've done this, I think, for one or two months. And this was the time where I was the most productive, the most, um, I think, inspired of yeah. the pandemic just because it was not about, like, having this beautiful, ready to publish thing. It was about making, about trying things. You were also entering community because you've, you'll be linked with the other people that are uh, doing the workshop as well. You're seeing other things because uh, obviously I've just uh, showed inspiration and references that are within the realm of graphic design, but I do think it's important to get your inspiration everywhere else as well. And working with people that are doing something completely different, sometimes video, painting, or poetry. I think there's maybe someone that is doing copyright in there. Uh, you can see that there's no borders to inspiration. And sometimes you'll get inspiration from something that is like the, the farthest of your actual little realm or industry or... So, so I think it's really important to look at everything, to consider everything that could inspire you. Yes. I, I always, uh, do you know, some of the advice personally I give Juliet is when I'm talking to people about thinking more creatively. Yeah. Is to make sure that you don't, you know, you don't put yourself into a niche in the first place, which some people do. They always listen to the same music. They always eat the same food. They always yeah. go to the same, do you know what I mean? The same kind of things. 
well i like dance music well good you know but also try some jazz also try some punk rock also try some things that you would never ordinarily look at you know or listen to take on foods and different cultures that you would know you know definitely find something obscure and dive into it and that's what gives you new sparks i think i think it's especially relevant right now because Mm. um not only will it fuel your creative journey, but I feel like it's also almost a duty to understand and try to see different things from your own. Yeah. I, so I was doing the workshop um, when the, the protest started in America and I was also on the verge of starting my own project. And I feel like it, it kind of obviously I'm close uh, to that type of um, of issues, and this is something that is with me all the time, every time. So it's not out of my comfort zone. But I feel like it started uh, something new for a lot of people that would discover that okay, so there's some people that cannot escape racism. Uh, there, there is like. A different world from my own and mm. although it was especially brutal for us uh, I think it was great for plenty of people that didn't get the chance to have this type of conversation on the daily mm. so suddenly people would read new things would try uh, and reach out to different people or look at the production the the work of different different people and i think it's really important yeah to make sure you have like diverse sources of inspiration uh which is why when i started with the my fun projects i was actually advising um underrepresented communities to apply because yeah. obviously everyone is free to apply and this shouldn't like if you're not from said communities this should not stop you from applying but it's a reality within design that it's very elitist and not really diverse that we're trying to just have a seat at, at the table and i think it's important to be aware of that be aware mm. uh, of the fact that design is not existing like outside of everything within a vacuum where nothing else uh, matters or nothing else exists i yeah. do think there's a duty to realize that graphic design is existing within a context within this world and that there's a a great an immense power um to uh graphic design and i don't think it should be taken lightly so i guess maybe another advice to someone that was that that would start is play have fun but also make sure that you know that what you're doing is powerful because if you end up working in graphic design, uh, in tech, for example, which is so powerful nowadays, you have to keep in mind that you're not just pushing pixels or making something pretty or even making something useful. I think it's bigger than that because you're creating for other humans and ultimately what you're doing will always serve a purpose. So I think it's important mm-hmm. to be like aware of that. I do, I, do you know, I know so many people that take, I know a few pe- few people that are in, in a lot of pain, you know, but the, what I'm amazed by, uh, and I've got some experience of this myself, as I'm sure we all have, but I know some, the, some of the people that I know that are, in, that are obviously in pain turn around, they use that energy, but they don't use it to, to invert upon themselves what they do is they use it and turn it into something else and i've seen some beautiful work from people who put up with or endure all sorts of pain that's a good thing to do to channel you know to channel something through and to take that energy definitely like a punch rather than to just absorb it and be impacted by it to actually absorb, you know, to take the energy and turn the energy around yeah, and push it into something else. Definitely. It was it was pretty much what started mm. my project, I feel like. So uh, my project was on black womanhood yeah. and mental health. 
but it was simply because it was a subject that was in my life close to me i'm a black man i have mm. a best friend that is a black woman and we have been dealing with depression mm. and there were so many things so emotions we went through while processing and healing from that that at the end of the day yes i felt compelled to tell that story and to try and get this emotion out of me and for other people to see because i felt like we were not alone and surely other people would need to hear and feel what we had dealt with and i think this is where um things like adobe can be a game changer because it's a thing to bring yourself to tell the story but it's also really important for us to have platforms that can push the the project and that can make like i think help other people to discover that mm. so i guess yeah the the crucial thing for me would be in the days in the years to come to have more and more people companies that are ready to amplify voices to make sure all type of different messages and stories are well reaching the forefront because i feel like especially when you are on design twitter most of the time every, like the the only thing that will i think bring it in conversation will be oh uh, this company just changed logo or <laughs> this but <laughs> yeah i know react to that very, very good yeah <laughs> yeah i know exactly what you mean yeah. but it, it's not by any means all what there is to design like i feel like there's the same 10 10 people and i'm not eating at all i'm actually following most of them because they like bring me new perspective and i'm learning about design but also i think it's important especially right now when we're discovering that so many algorithm so many products built also by designers are skewed or ha- have biases that mm. we understand okay well actually graphic design or design is what actually change and shape the world so we are communicators that's the thing we definitely. are definitely the the purpose of graphic design is to solve a design problem in exactly. taking a message from a sender using a medium the medium of graphic design to distribute that message to an audience it's a powerful tool exactly. and you know what we and need I to do is react against the people that are using it inappropriately to spread the wrong message yeah definitely yeah. but also yeah i do think we need to realize how powerful it is because uh maybe because uh well i'm still early in my career and i remember starting and just being like okay i hope my my work is good enough i hope i'll get the job i hope i'll and maybe losing perspective um of the fact that well i'm changing the world obviously i'm not like me myself and i my tiny self won't change everything but i have a responsibility and i have a duty to understand what i'm doing with my work and what i'm allowing other people to do with my work someone that speak uh, to that beautifully is mike montero um so is i think he released a book last year called ruined by design and it's mostly about graphic design well, not graphic design i think ui design in tech and product design right and it's everything we need to know about how powerful design is and how cautious we should be like realizing that oh well actually we're enabling things so we should know what we're <laughs> enabling basically. absolutely yeah we need to know the consequences of what we're doing and and yeah for true um, unfortunately though our time today julia is is coming to an end yeah It's been lovely having you on here. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, it's been great and it's been really nice and thank you for being so open with with your work and your journey there. It's been really refreshing and people in the chat have really really uh, enjoyed that. Now, for our community, uh, before we both say goodbye to you, don't forget that the conversation doesn't have to end here. We have our own Discord where you can carry on chatting 
throughout the day and the night should you feel uh, the need to do so do check out the work don't forget keep making work yourself stay creative keep connected to things and turn that energy into something good but from myself and julia it's time to say cheerio so thanks again julia thank All you right. so much take Bye. good care okay brilliant <laughs> lovely to see you and we'll see you again i'm sure Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Have a lovely weekend, and uh, we'll see you all next Monday at midday for more Adobe Live. Take care now. Bye-bye.